the dub. Um, and I wasn't able to connect with her like most people because in her spirit, she felt that I wasn't ready to receive her. I had a lot to go on with my life, and my grandma took extra care of her before she died. And she says, tell me, just do the family, take care of my mom. Because I want you to have the best life. So I tried, and she didn't want to open up. And it pained me to see her. She would be out, out doing her thing, and she didn't want me to help her. People, friends would call me and start seeking love in God of awful places. And she didn't want me to help. So finally, when she was in the state hospital, and I went to see her. She loved seeing me. She was glad to see me in the family. And I asked her, I said, what, what would you like in life? She says, I just want to be loved. And I just want to be given a chance to spend time with family. That meant so much to me. And I prayed, and I prayed. I said, God, can we, can we get her in a place where she can be happy and see the family? And that's where Doug Atkins, he had a facility open. And we would transfer her there. And her life was never the same since. She, she lived a beautiful life. She had so many friends. And she, and I would just, every time I would come, I would take her to lunch. Her favorite place was the potter's house. Everybody, if anybody needed the potter's house, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Her favorite is oxtails. She loves oxtails. That was her favorite. <laughs> I'm not an oxtail kind of back. I'll, I'll, I'll be frank. But she loved oxtails. And the people there treated her with so much love and respect. And they knew when I would wheel her in a wheelchair, they knew that we had a special connection. And my mom always taught me to have a connection with everyone here and everyone that I touch, the lives I touch. Um, I was on the road, I was at the US Open this year. My mom was always interested in my officiating career because that's, I've been doing it for 35 years. And uh, I came back, I hadn't been home in almost a month. So I, someone told me, call her. Call her and spend some time with her. So I, I called the facility and said, I want to arrange lunch with my mom. I was spending spend some time with her. And she was so happy. She was all dressed up. In fact, that hat right there, that's what she wore. She carried her little uh, doll with her. That was her favorite doll that Jack got for her because she's always claiming she's pregnant. <laughs> so she had a baby. Now she has a real baby right there. She carried that baby everywhere she went. And it was a symbol of love and compassion and new life that she wanted to express to people. And so that doll represented my mom, that hat represented her beauty and her style. And so I took her to lunch. We drove all the way from Hillier, Florida, all the way there to Potter's House in Music Square. And that's a long drive, but I didn't mind. And she didn't mind. We turned on the music and we'd just listen to all kinds of music, we'll talk. And even though it was hard for me to hear what she had to say, um, this time, everything was crystal clear. I could hear every word. And someone told me when that happens, um, mm -hmm. she's, ready to, she's ready to come home, she's ready to go to God. So I took her back, I kissed her, and I told her how much I loved her. And then three days later, God took her. So what I wanted, and, and I, I want to say for those of you, and I know Krista and Jack and, and Doug, y'all said it beautifully, you know, just don't wait until a loved one goes. That's right. We're all different. We come from all different backgrounds. We're all unique. My mom was unique. Even though people may see her differently, they may, you know, may not like her, they may talk about her, you know, but one thing for sure that we all have in common, we all want to be loved, we all want to be respected, yes. and we want to get that back. And that's what my mom did the last several years of her life. She opened my heart to doing that. And for me, that, that's kind of what I'm going to do for, for, for all of you and for those who you touch and love in life. So it's hard for me to kind of, I'm all over the place right now because emotionally I'm in many different directions, but I do know I feel love 
and I appreciate y'all being here. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking time to drive, fly, wherever you came from, from all over all the U.S. to be here. Because I think my mom, like I said, my mom is happy right now. Just knowing that all of you are here just to be a part of this. And so I want to say thank you for having this ceremony here. And thank my aunt and thank everyone here for putting this all together. Because I was traveling all over the place. And I had no idea how this was going to come together. And, and, and this is a beautiful setup here. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It's all because of all of you. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you all, and God bless you. Amen. Amen.